point is, like, I wasn't sure about it, but after having played it, I love it. Like, I love this game, and I think there's a lot to take away from this game. Uh, I'm really, really glad that we've been playing it. Hi, we're Games by Design. I'm Nick Dunlap, and I'm joined by my brother, Zach. Hello. And our friend, Aaron Bone. Hey. Thanks for tuning in. This is our special game highlight episode, and today we will be talking about Darkest Dungeon, the 2015 role-playing game by Red Hook Studios. We're just going to hop right in. I want to talk about the tutorializing of this game, how it starts you off, what it tells you, um, and uh, and whatnot. And I wondered what kind of experiences you guys had with that, but I also will first just share my own experience with that, uh, which was that it was kind of a mess uh, for me, honestly, <laughs> when I started out. I, uh, I, I, I was having a really hard time figuring out um, all these, like, uh, it has all these abbreviations during, like, the combat, where it's like ACC, which I guess is accuracy, probably. I don't know. I couldn't find out. But there were all these uh, abbreviations, P-R-O-T and, uh, and uh, ACC and DMG. You know, I, I could intuit some of these because I'd played other games, but there were some stuff I just had no idea what it meant. Uh, and I... It was like mousing over stuff and I just couldn't find anything. And so I, I just ended up guessing a lot. And I felt like that was a lot of this game for me was uh, I just kind of like guessed and was able to figure out a lot. It wasn't especially unintuitive, but like the information was not readily accessible to me. So I wondered how easy it was for you guys to learn the game and figure out what, you know, that stuff. Oh, well, I can tell you I never read the glossary. <laughs> <laughs> never once <laughs> yeah yeah I'd, I'd click on it by mistake sometimes but like i'd never <laughs> read it <laughs> uh -huh. see, how, see how long that thing is you know uh, yeah. No. I, yeah. I saw that it was there and i just i looked in it to, i just wanted to see well, can you tell me what these abbreviations mean and then when i saw it wasn't there i never checked it again either so yeah yeah i don't know yeah i i similar like <clears throat> i've been playing for a while and like it was only last night that I learned some things that I that some really basic stuff that I didn't I didn't know how to I'd never camped until I played last night actually even though I'd been playing uh -huh. quite a bit I'd just been doing like the medium ones like without camping because <laughs> I didn't uh -huh. know how. <laughs> wow. yeah yeah well, I was like I couldn't figure it out yeah mm -hmm. but um I think it does tell you how to do that I just you know I forgot and what yeah. it told me when it wasn't relevant to me and then I never remembered it again so so yeah. yeah no it's um i don't know yeah i feel like honestly we've already kind of talked about this a little bit but like after playing crusader kings 3 <laughs> like all i want in a game especially one that has this many like moving parts and features is the nested tool tips like i kept mousing over abbreviations and things in this game hoping that it would like reveal to me what that means you know just expand on the abbreviation yeah you know yeah. Like mouse over it, and instead of saying ACC, now it says accuracy. I was like, oh, okay, accuracy. <laughs> you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. There's so much learning the game that was uh, basically trial and error. You know, mm -hmm. like, oh, what does this attack do? Okay, that's what that does. What does this move do? Okay, that's what that does. And then, yeah, you know, just logging it away. It's like, okay, this attack does this. That attack does this. What is it? The enemy yep. does that. I don't want them to do that. So you know. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was only really recently that I paid attention to some of those details and was like, oh, I can figure out what this attack, is, or at least who this attack is going to affect by these these, these dots that, that show, you know, whether it's going to attack this line of enemies or, or like link, yeah. the, you know, the, the group of them. Um, and so, yeah, but, but, but going off, yeah, it was, it was a lot of trial and error. Um, I it's not really a tutorial with the game. Like uh -huh. I even, when I first started playing the game, um, I was adjusting my volume as I started to play it and I accidentally skipped the intro cutscene, And so <laughs> I'm just like in this dungeon and I'm like, what's going on? Why am I here? Like, what? Yeah. If you change the volume, <laughs> you skip cutscenes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. I, yeah. Like that. Uh -huh. I like, I went back later, you know, there's like a little archive thing in, in your little main hub that you mm -hmm. can watch cutscenes, right. and i watched the opening cutscenes like oh okay that would have okay like mm -hmm. <laughs> there, there's a story and a point that's okay that's fun right yeah 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 and i feel you, like i mean you're just kind of thrown in 
Yeah, and it, it, I feel like, I mean, it, it's kind of telling that we all, I think, yeah. we're all able to play the game without, while just being thrown in. Yeah, um, that's like, a good point, It's not yeah. an especially complicated game. I mean, like, it's got a lot of systems at play, but they're, like, once you start engaging with them, they, they, uh, mm-hmm. they start you can, to... They you can get sense. by ignoring a lot of the systems. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, it's just, a, yeah. And so, like, hey. Yeah, it's interesting. That, that, that's all that thought. The difficulty doesn't really come from like the, the understanding how the game works. Well, I mean, we all had some trouble, but mm-hmm. probably not the the most of it. Um, so, yeah, and I, and I guess yeah. it the game can be very punishing at times. It can mm-hmm. feel like it's working against you. It can it can mm-hmm. feel unfair just with some of the things that that, that happen despite your best efforts. So mm-hmm. I guess the way the game just kind of throws it in there is, is pretty indicative of that. So, yeah. you know, maybe if there was more of a hand tutorial or like this and this, it would rely its intentions more to just mess you up as you play, you know, yeah. give you a false confidence going in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the difficulty a little bit then. Um, yeah. How did you guys feel about that? I'm, I'd say... It's, I mean, it's it's kind of infamous for being a, a pretty punishing game. You've got stuff like permadeath and stress and, and yeah. a lot of randomness, which I think we're going to get into all of that. We've got, um, we're going to talk about that all in detail. But the difficulty itself and just kind of the general game experience, how hard it was, um, what kind of thoughts do you guys have there? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, honestly, like kind of, it's kind of like off what we were just talking, like most of the difficulty I faced was just I didn't understand the game, actually. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, and so, like, um, I was able to play without really understanding everything, but, like, as I began to kind of get familiar with it and stuff, um, I, I mean, like, and, like, to be fair, like, I actually have been mostly playing around in the easier, I'm still, I still haven't beaten all the, like, early level bosses and stuff. I've beaten, like, three or four of them, Mm -hmm. but, um, but, uh. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I'm actually not having much trouble with it now. Like, there's some danger, and, like, I do occasionally lose heroes, occasionally, but, like, uh-huh. um, it's much better now than it was in the beginning when I lost, like, f- five or six guys in a couple of weeks, you know, just two uh-huh. expeditions that killed, like, you know, but, I don't know, that, that's, that's kind of my thing, like, once I understand the systems, like, I actually feel pretty capable of, of, uh, of beating it now granted i haven't made an attempt on the darkest dungeon itself yet mm-hmm. yeah and the bosses yeah. are pretty tough especially if you don't know what they're gonna do yeah yeah i yeah oh my gosh there was just some times when i got absolutely wrecked just from like all right i got all my great heroes and, and just and it wasn't that the boss was especially hard but i just didn't know what it was gonna do i don't know if you guys fought the hag um uh-uh. with the she's got like this big cauldron that she just throws a hero in and if your characters <laughs> are up close they can only attack the cauldron they can't hit her like uh-huh. and so i just went in there with a party that was not built for it because i had no idea yeah and, you don't know and and that was when i lost one of my favorite heroes was the, the tragic death of Lerny, the highway man um <laughs> it was so upsetting to me i tried highway i had to flee i had to leave him he was boiled alive and i had to leave him behind because oh I no he's gonna die it was tragic it was, it was uh one of my favorite experiences in the game actually because then you know i had to assemble this revenge squad that went back and it was just really good um i, <laughs> I really liked it but uh but uh yeah it just I feel like a lot of it is you just don't really know what to expect until you're thrown into it, and the game really does kind of just throw you into a lot of stuff yeah. without a yeah, whole lot of true. telling you what's going on first. That is Some true. Of, my experience with the difficulty, and this, this may not be exactly how it works, but remind me a little bit about how life seems some of the time, where it's like the harder I try at something, the harder it gets. Or the you know the more more works works against me, um, you know there are moments in the game where I had you know my my veterans you know I was like oh these guys are level two you know I'm, yeah, I didn't get very far but you know, they, they, they were experienced you know and um, I'd send them into an area and just get destroyed and wouldn't even make it past a few rooms because um, you know 
my, my top guy was a highway man for a while too. And I remember sending mm-hmm. him into this dungeon and there was this dumb skeleton, uh, skeleton guy that had this move that would just automatically increase the stress level by like 20 every time it hit. And mm-hmm. he continually targeted my highway man the entire fight. He didn't target <laughs> anyone else. And so, you know, my guy starts out at like 30 and by the second room, he's at like 90. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, and there's not a whole lot of stress things you can do unless you, unless you camp, um, to bring him down or mm-hmm. certain attacks. And, um, you got that jester so anyway, boys. Uh, oh, the yeah, jester. Yeah, yeah. I love that guy. And I think, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um, and so I was, I was kind of frustrated because I don't know, before, I had like gotten up to like the end area with a group of just complete newbies. And I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I can get there. They got destroyed by the boss. But if I send good guys in there, <laughs> you know, they'll make it. And then uh-huh. I send, you know, my quote unquote elite squad in and, you know, I have to leave halfway through the dungeon. Uh-huh. So <laughs> it's, uh, I... I don't know. That, that might just be how the RNG was affecting me. And it, and it seemed like it was punishing me for, trying to do I, I don't know if it scales with the heroes at all but um i just i just I, I was having much better luck just sending a brand new squad in every time than trying to or maybe having like one or two um, uh-huh. experienced people because uh, i don't know it seemed like if i if i send too many experienced in then the game was like oh you know what you're doing and so we're gonna <laughs> make it hard that's interesting i mm-hmm. do you mind if i ask a kind of a somewhat related question i just want to yeah, go for it i want to know which bosses you guys have beaten oh yeah like how, how many have you got which ones you know yeah or I which got, ones have uh, you encountered maybe if you haven't beaten them you know yeah so i mean like i played i, I put about 10 hours into the game uh mm-hmm. which was kind of what we were all aiming for and so like it's still definitely early stuff i never i only fought in the first like you know three area oh, i guess four areas but i fought the the uh the necromancer apprentice yeah, me the, too. The hag. The hag was the most recent thing. That was a, around where I stopped was when I finally beat the hag. Oh, I haven't fought the hag. Where is she? In yeah. The wield? Or oh, the... she sucks. I think she's in the wield. Yeah. She's yeah. got this. Yeah. She's got this big cauldron that, I mean, that she throws the heroes in and they can't do anything and they just start boiling. And oh, so no. you're like down oh, a God. hero half the fight. Oh, and then as terrible. soon as you get them out, she throws another one in and then they start boiling oh. alive. So you're trying to do damage to her. But you're also trying to save the hero from the cauldron so they don't die. Yeah. And you just end up leaving them behind and you feel oh. terrible. And then all of your characters are filled with stress because their best friend got boiled alive. And then you have to deal with all of that. And so you send them to the brothel and then they have other problems because they went to a brothel. <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I fought, I fought, um, I fought the apprentice necromancer. Uh-huh. Um, and then I fought the sonorous prophet. Okay. And the Swine Prince. Hmm. Yeah. So he's like were, the Warrens guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's in the Warrens. He's horrible. Sounds they're like all that. horrible. They're all like so, <laughs> yeah. so tough. And they're so devastating. And they're so horrific in theme and appearance. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It it's, is kind of a thing. Like you, you fight your regular mobs of enemies and you get pretty confident uh-huh. with them. And then you get to the boss and it's just it's just a whole new challenge that you're not prepared for. Right. Yeah. Every yeah. time I find something new, like it's just, I was like, Oh no, what the heck is that? You know, like, it was, <laughs> new it's is bad. bad. New is bad. Yeah. I mean, it reminds <laughs> me of like, actually this game reminds me of XCOM in a lot of ways. I, I really enjoyed playing XCOM too. Yeah. Uh, and this game gives me such a similar experience where like things are going well. And then something comes along that I just haven't seen before. And it just yeah. destroys me. But in a lot of ways, I think it's really interesting that like, I found this game to be easier than XCOM. Hmm. Uh, like the moment to moment, like dungeon crawling fighting wasn't like necessarily easier. You know, stuff went wrong really quick, but like yeah. you're not really on the clock. You can take your time. You can always recruit new people. The aliens aren't going to kill you right now. If you don't do stuff, you can pick your missions. You can take oh, care yeah. of people who've been hurt. Um, and I really like, you can retreat if you need to. Yeah. You can retreat easily. Like it's easy usually, unless your guys refuse to retreat and then people get boiled (laughs) alive and it's all their fault. Um, I'm not bitter. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) but, uh, like it's just, yeah, I, I found that like 
I actually was, I was pretty chill most of the time. Like, I was pretty relaxed between missions. I was like, all right, well, we'll get ready. We spend a lot of time getting ready. Oh, these guys aren't ready yet. I'll send them on a few shorter expeditions so we can make some more cash and they can get some more experience. And, like, I was actually, like, pretty, pretty slow pace between the missions and stuff. I was pretty relaxed, I found. The missions themselves were harrowing. Oh, of course. But the pacing, I thought, was, was, was handled really well. I was always so pleased to get back to the Hamlet. And I was like, ah, yeah, this is good. And, like... Uh yeah it was a relief mm-hmm. probably because of the contrast also i just like it i like the hamlet it's a fun yeah one. it's a fun place yeah. to hang out yeah you wanted to talk about that a little bit you want to yeah you sure yeah into that yeah so first of all um it's expensive <laughs> <laughs> like everything there is so expensive which i think is really interesting because it was like uh this is actually why i got into trouble in the beginning and lost a few have you guys lost many heroes by the way I I lost two. Yeah. Two. Yeah. I lost Mustard and Lurney. I, I know that means nothing to you, but it means a lot to me. I care very uh, much about both of those guys. I lost Mustard <laughs> and Lurney. I mean, I went maybe six, seven hours without losing anybody, and then I lost, like, seven in a pretty short time. Oof. Yeah. Well, I didn't know about the retreat option at first. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so this is actually this is actually how I got into trouble is that I wasn't really super paying attention to how much everything was costing me um, mm. at the Hamlet. And so I was like, oh, I'm just going to like upgrade a whole bunch of stuff on my heroes and then I'll take them back out again. And mm. then it turns out, you know, what's more important than making sure your heroes are like skilled is making sure that they have food and food. torches uh-huh. and torches. equipment. The provisions, man, like Band if you spend them. all your money at the Hamlet and you don't bring enough provisions, it doesn't matter at all. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but like yeah, did you guys uh did you guys use all the Hamlet buildings? I ended up upgrading a lot of different places and and uh, spending um, a lot of time with a bunch of different buildings. But I'm curious about what you guys did there and whether you liked them or not. Yeah, I never did too much with like the guild and the um, armory because outside, like I don't know the basic stuff you could do. It was like, oh, your dude needs to be like apprentice myth level whatever to, to use this and so i never really mm-hmm. got to that mm-hmm. level um but yeah i, I kind of like how you have to balance you know because what provisions you bring also fills up the spots of what you can take from the dungeon and so yeah. you have to balance like okay is this gonna be um a survival like i just need to get through it get to the boss and get out or is this gonna be a looting you know try to try to get money from this or, or get things and so i uh I kind of like there was a balance, but I, I for the most part didn't feel too pressed on on money. I don't know. Maybe early on, yeah. I just focused mm-hmm. on on getting the coins that I was used to. Like most of the longer expeditions, I just bought like all the food and most of the torches, yeah, uh, as provisions. <laughs> yeah. Um, and usually still had plenty afterwards for, uh, you know, rehabilitating the heroes when. They suffer trauma. Uh, yeah. It's such a... Sorry, go ahead. No, and that's just such a fun system. And I like how they get traits that like, oh, when this person sits down, he only wants to drink. And then it's uh-huh. like, oh, he drunk last night and they threw him out of the tavern. He can't drink anymore. And it's like, yeah. All right. All right well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love the, you know, the... This guy's an atheist. He won't pray. You know? You won't, uh, yeah, he, I like it. it's the witness trait. So it's like they saw something, and now they don't want to pray anymore. Like, what did they uh-huh. see? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you see some of those monsters and stuff, and you're like, I don't know, I'd probably wreck me too. Like, yeah, well, crazy good point. Eldritch horrors and the yeah, horrors, you know, they're pretty yeah. horrific. Yeah, well, I love the pattern and the and the cycle of like, you take them out on these harrowing, horrible journeys, and then you bring them home, and you have to decide, am I going to help you rehabilitate? Or mm-hmm. am I going to, like, say, okay, well, thanks for your service and goodbye? Yeah. Or are you going to just, like, run them completely ragged until there's nothing left of them, you know? Like, you kind of have yeah. those three three options there. And it's a really fun kind of <sighs> moral question. And, and there's what I like about this particular moral question is that mm-hmm. all of those strategies are totally viable. So it's kind of, and uh-huh, they all yeah. have, like, and they all have, like, advantages to them. Yeah. So it's, like, it's not, like, hey, do you want to do the bad thing and nothing good will come of it? It's like yeah. like some games do, you know? And it's like, uh-huh. why would I do that? There's no... 
I don't want to be nasty just for the sake of being nasty, guys. Like, you mm-hmm. know, in real life, most people don't either. It's like there's a temptation. There's a there's something enticing about it, you know. Yeah, I I loved that. Yeah, I love that because sometimes it was like, all right, this person's this person's having a rough go, but they're really good at their job, and like I need I need them, so I'm gonna throw them in. You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of them. I'm gonna treat their diseases, their illnesses, and then sometimes I'll have this person that's just weak, and is is dying a lot, and is sick, and is so mentally unstable, and I'm like, go home, go back to your family, like like. <laughs> You're not yeah. helping me. I feel terrible. Just leave. Yeah. <laughs> and Did you guys end up dismissing I, very maybe many a, of them? Maybe adventuring isn't your thing. Yeah, uh, maybe. I definitely, yeah. I, I definitely like, if a better yeah. person showed up, I I was like, all right, well, they don't have as many mental problems as you do, and you're just going to get more, so go home. <laughs> yeah, I, up, I definitely I up, dismissed yeah. a few. I upgraded my roster so I could have, like, 18 people at once, uh-huh. and so I, I think I yeah. would dismiss one who yeah same reason was just weak and would like anytime he'd go out he'd be like don't send me out there you know don't don't do it i, I didn't like it last time don't do it again even if he <laughs> didn't have a lot of stress so it was, you know which i think is fun I, the game does so much with so little like just the little blurbs of speech mm-hmm. you know when you're when you're picking your team and you have someone's like oh i can't do another one like that again it's like okay i won't send you and then you have the guy that's like send me in coach it's like okay all right <sighs> Yeah. yeah. Just those little things. Or when you're camping and they have their little, you know, conversations with each other. That right just before the lights go out. Yeah. It's, yeah. You Love know, that. it's just like, oh, we almost didn't make it. It's like, oh, I think we're going to be fine. Oh, this isn't too bad. It's like, oh, yeah. you, you had it rough there. Like, they, they yeah. had so much yeah. personality yeah. With, with honestly so little. I, I think it, it works really great. I love yeah. that you feel. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. Oh, I wanted to talk, like, feeling attached, I, I assume. I don't know if that's what you're going to say, but, like, I want to talk about personality yeah, yeah. And, 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 like, how attached you feel. But go ahead, what, what you were going to say. Well, I was just going to say, I love how much you feel like a coach. It's like, mm-hmm. or, or maybe like a like an employer or something. I think more yeah. like a coach, though. It depends. Yeah. It depends. And who is this and guy like, just gathering up people and throwing them into the yeah. <laughs> dangerous situations? <laughs> I think that, um, but it's Adventure like, Adventure Town I don't know. Scout. Yeah, <laughs> that's the guy in the wagon. He's like bringing them in, and then you're like training them and putting. But the thing is, like, you have to push them in order to like, you know, in order for them to get better, and in order for you to reach your goals. You know, yeah. like, um, you do you do have to like make some hard decisions where it's and you get attached to them, and it's amazing because it's like, oh, I like that guy, but like, and and I feel bad that he's having a hard time, but mm-hmm. I know he can give more, and. Uh-huh. I know that in order to win, we got to push ourselves. And like, Mm -hmm. I imagine, I don't know. I just feel like, you know, your court side or whatever, or your training or your practicing with your, your team, whatever sport it is or whatever. And I think it's kind of a similar kind of a a feel. I think, I don't know. Some people have compared this game to running a, a business a little bit. And these are your employees Uh (laughs) and then you get to treat them and then you get to choose what kind of boss you are, where it's like, yeah, (laughs) "Yeah, I don't really care about human life. Just keep throwing them in there. Or, you could be like, no, I really want to like give these guys like benefits and like take care of them and make sure that they're able to perform and that you know they like yeah. working for the, me. You know? uh, so like you're the you're the Jeff Bezos of Dungeon Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I love that. Like, I just cared so much. Like, I, I felt I liked that. I felt like a character. Like, like. I remember playing in XCOM. This was a problem I ran into, and I just felt like I was just I was controlling everyone. Like I was everyone almost. Mm-hmm. And like they definitely had problems, but like the stress mechanic in this game is so much. I mean, there was stress in XCOM. It wasn't really that fleshed out. But in this one, like yeah. the characters just feel like people. Um, and I loved yeah. that I like felt like I was actually interacting with these people instead of just like the Sims, you know, lording over their whole life and every every moment now you go right. to the bathroom and now you go to the bathroom <laughs> meatballs for dinner you know <laughs> but like the, here it's the, like it's like hey are you okay and he's like yeah man i could just use a drink and i'm like go get a drink man go get a drink yeah <laughs> you, want, you know that's kind of what it feels like yeah well and the characters can say no to you you know yeah. like they can get stressed and they're like i'm not doing that. and they don't yeah. or, or they'll be like i can i can attack on my own and they choose their own attack yeah. you know you don't move them but you know they're the character is a klepto and so you go near any item of interest and they go straight for it with you know uh-huh. right kind yeah, of that like, taking away 
taking away your agency as a player does make it feel a little more fleshed out. They feel more uh, like yeah. people. And, like, yeah. I think something you mentioned, Nick, was, like, the permanent... Uh, so, well, I don't know if you mentioned this exactly, but, like, you're talking about how, like, they're stressed. I love that it, I love that their stress and their diseases and their conditions, they all, like, endure beyond just the combat. It's, like, mm -hmm. it's it's permanent until you take some action about it, you know, mm -hmm. like, in the Hamlet. Like, it could be there for weeks that this guy has the Black Plague or something. Yeah. And you don't do anything about it. <laughs> um, or you could throw... Yeah, you get say, back in there. Yeah. <laughs> this, and that's the thing. This is what makes me think about it being like a business or a, or a or a company or something. It's like, well, do you have benefits? Do you have like plague treatment benefits for your employees? Like, what, how do you uh -huh. how do you respond yeah. when when uh, it's like dental, but instead of, you know, dental, it's like plague, you know? And so, yeah, um, oh, man, I, but I love I think it's the permanent consequences that kind of make it feel like. I don't know, there's some weight to everything and it, I think uh -huh. that it makes the characters feel more real because they react and and change over the course of the game based on what happens to them. And that yeah. that happens with yeah. like death. They can permanently die is the most extreme example. They mm -hmm. can pick up quirks that like that very intentionally must be like, you know, um fixed or or maybe they just live with them and maybe you just gotta live with it. And like I thought yeah. it was way too much money to like try to like Fix make them the all problems. fix all their problems for them so like yeah, i was yeah. like you know i'm just gonna work with what i got here and like that's the yeah. way it was yep no i i felt the same way like sometimes there's there's so much that you have to choose what to manage because like this person mm -hmm. has all of these problems and all of these good things there's so much personality that they cram into just a few stats mm -hmm. you know like um he's a kleptomaniac he won't pray he only you know he he he's sick so he, he gets moved easily he's got vertigo or the black plague or, or whatever <laughs> you know like there was so much so much to everybody that you couldn't deal with all of it and so like right. they they really took on their own they're, they're really they become unique even if they all start out you know oh, it's another highwayman it's another paladin sword guy i don't know whatever they're called but like th they become you know no that's that's not another highwayman that's learning you know, I know Lerny. He's uh he's got some problems, but but he's a good guy. He's dependable. He won't go near the cove. He's really scared of that place for some reason. But you know, that's fine. Whatever. You know, like <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing I loved about him too is that they had faults and flaws and like things that were really inconvenient for you sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like they have positive traits and they have negative traits, and you gotta like be and you gotta like deal with both of those. And I think that's a big part of what makes them feel like real people too. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I got so and, attached. <laughs> yeah. And the, you know, the whole, the party dynamics too. It's like these negative traits don't just affect the one hero. It's like it yeah. has stress on other people. Like I remember, you know, when, when your character reaches, you know, that stress threshold and it's like their resolve is tested. And uh, I like it. Sometimes that can be positive too, where there's uh -huh. like, they, it's like, oh, yeah. they, now, now they're determined and, they lose stress and they come off it. Um, I remember one time I had this bounty hunter who was always stressed and then he became abusive. And the entire mm. rest of the match, he's insulting like every member of the party <laughs> before they do anything. And But then like he's super powerful during the entire match. And he was just like, see, that was nothing. I'm the only professional here. What, you guys can't do that? And, <laughs> you know, on one hand, it was kind of frustrating because it's like, you're making my party go insane and I'm going to lose these guys to Matt. You know, someone's going to have a heart attack. But it, it added so much depth and personality. There was, there was like, you know, the benefit of like, oh, wow, this guy's hitting every single one of his shots and they're like mm -hmm. getting all these crits. But he's like super abusive and mean to everyone, you know, everyone in the party. And, <laughs> he's your star player, but he's also mouthing off to all the refs. And he's yeah, like, like, yeah, <laughs> it felt like a real. Yeah. If this guy was like a real dungeon crawler adventurer, like probably you'd get some like that. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you would. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, I like, yeah, the characters in this game felt very real to mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the way that they act and st the fact that they have some kind of agency that's beyond your control. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they, 
get stressed and then they act out and the fact that they have positive and negative things and then things affect them like permanently like all that stuff contributes to it feeling like that those are all like really good ingredients i think for Mm -hmm. for making it feel like that's a person and then you care about them you might get frustrated with them but you still care about them yeah Mm -hmm. and some of them are just terrible and you're like i hate you (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) yeah Yeah, there's like this and and i think something else that it handles well is there's so many different classes and you yeah. have a pretty limited roster that like, I don't know, for you guys, I never had more than like two people of one class at a time. Like mm. more than that, it was like, whatever. So I was able to keep mm-hmm. track of everybody pretty well. Like I could tell, you know, like, and I, and I named, I, 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 I took, I made sure to name people names that I could pronounce. Cause like some of the times I, I liked the name they already had, but I didn't even know what that was, you know, sometimes. So I was like, all right, this guy's name kind of looks like this. So I'd, I'd change him and I'd rename the characters so that I was able to keep track of them better. Um, yeah. And so like, like, I know, like off the top of my head, you know, that doomed expedition that was Russell the Bard, you know, he was great. That was Lerny the Highwayman and Regis the the, the, the knight and, and Muriel, my healer or whatever. You know, it's like, I just know this off the top of my head. I was able to keep right. track of these people. And then, you know, oh, well, we fought them. That was Cucumbrus and uh, whatever Cucumbrus. that was. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was one of my favorites. <laughs> he was one of the occultists. <laughs> He's great. Well, you know, like, uh, I, they just stick in my head because they were distinct and stuff. Um and I, I just love that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. And then they die. Um, oh. And there's permadeath. And I don't know, Zach, you wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, I think I, I think I've kind of touched on what I'm excited about about it already. Is that it's just yeah. The well, the first of all, there's the, the fact that life has death in it, and so whenever a game doesn't, it's weird, which is a lot. <laughs> and yeah. so. And especially, again, I think it just fits in a game like this, too. Like, you probably can't put permadeath in a game, in a narrative game. But, like, a game mm-hmm. like this, like, it just works. And yeah. it just works. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, like, yeah. So, and also, it provides tension. Like, there's some serious danger to sending out your star players, even, into, even when they are prepared. Like, they might die, you know? Like, you never mm-hmm. know what's going to yeah. happen. And yeah. I love that the danger and the tension of the whole thing you know yeah but like i lost like quite a few guys on that one time when i a didn't provision properly and b didn't know that you could retreat (laughs) so (laughs) that sucked (laughs) yeah the total party total party knockout or ko or kill or whatever they call it yeah they were all dead oh yeah it was rough yeah and it hurts oh so much i mean like they're mechanically important but they also like they're people like we've been talking about it's just yeah yeah i'm not gonna lie i kind of hit a point where after a particularly rough i, I think the first time i lost heroes well if i if i could actually just share this i so I, I was talking about you know sending veterans in you know and that became a lot harder so mm-hmm. I, I had these guys and i sent them in with the boss and it was like three decently experienced again like level two guys but, um, and then like, <laughs> then, and then there was one newbie and I sent them to take, I think it was the apprentice necromancer yeah. and throughout the dungeon, just these guys are getting hammered. And then I get to the boss and in this run, I don't remember what happens. Maybe I was close to beating him. Maybe I didn't retreat. I don't know. Anyway, everyone, but the new person dies. Oh and then gosh. the new person oh. is super like traumatized. <laughs> and uh, I remember, it was, I actually, it was uh, it was Middleton, the Musketeer, and oh. <laughs> um, I was like, oh wow, like th- what? This is really hard for her. Like that's what what a crazy experience. But then I was like, okay, but she's my only long range person now, so I'm like, gonna have to, you know, keep her, uh, uh-huh. <laughs> put her back in. And so yeah, went through went through the tavern and built some some stuff up. Um, and and then I was thinking, I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. Like this could be kind of a character arc. She's the sole survivor of this like terrible massacre, you know, and then she, she leaves the you know, new, new pack of adventurers. And so I sent her with, um, af- after a few, um, other runs or, you know, getting rid of some of her negative stuff, I sent her, um, into just like a scouting mission with a, a bunch of new guys. And mm-hmm. in the middle of the scouting mission, this surprise boss pops up out of nowhere. Oh my that gosh. <laughs> totally unprepared for that. I just got all these new guys uh, test her resolve again, but this time uh, she becomes powerful. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is good. This is the character arc. She she got, got depressed last time, but now she's overcoming it. She's, she's doing it. 
And then she gets hit with a super strong attack and dies. Oh, my God. Oh, no. <laughs> no. That's, and was she like, had her... <laughs> oh, so much for that character. Like... <laughs> <laughs> At least she overcame her weakness before the end, right? <laughs> yeah, this is like the next <laughs> mission. Kidding. Like, she didn't have no, much yeah. of that. <laughs> um, and so from that from that point on, I, I'll, I'll admit, like, I, I kind of stopped paying attention to the names and what they were doing. I was just looking at, like, okay, oh, you, okay, I need this class and this dude and this thing to mm-hmm. go for. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, Became the jaded CEO. <laughs> <laughs> you know, lost, yeah, lost an employee in the factory accident. Now they're all expendable. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You know, I... I don't. I didn't have a. Per- this is really interesting. I didn't have a personal connection to all of mine. In fact, I don't. Like, I still don't. Mm-hmm. And like, but there are a few. Like, I can think of like a couple that mm-hmm. have kind of risen to the top in my mind that are that are important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I kind of like that. I don't think that that's really a bad thing. I don't think you need to have a connection to all of them. Yeah. No. But I, I, I think that be too much. Yeah. What's that? I said yeah. I, I think that would be too much. Like it would. Yeah. But like put, yeah. Put but there's a few that rise. Ringer. Yeah, they they rise up and um, and to, they kind of like rise to the surface of, of your consciousness and like become the ones that you remember and and it's like oh yeah that guy okay so I got like Dismas the Highwayman who I think I've had since the very very beginning uh-huh. and Dismas yeah yeah Brebuff the Jester oh yeah who manages to he's better than like the stress management in town man like I'll just take uh-huh. him out and like. He fixes people up. He just fix everybody. I just take him out with like some stressed out people and like just like bring their stress down on the mission. Like, hey, that like mission little... was more stress relieving than the brothel was, you know. <laughs> it's like you've got a you've got like a it's like a, a stress vacation like like yeah. hideaway, but you're going to like a dungeon to kill zombies. Yeah. But like it's a <laughs> it's like this this hippie retreat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so but I, I think that's kind of a, that's a really interesting thing. And actually, if you guys don't mind me, kind of like touch in on another game yeah here um i've been thinking a lot about crusader kings 3 because we've all still been playing a lot of that since the last time we we did um for our game highlight and like um there's it's kind of a similar thing for me where it's like yeah there's so many characters in that game that like especially okay so after the first character you play like subsequent generations just take on a new tone you know, mm-hmm. and like, because there's just so much more. And also the relationships that you have developed are all gone. And now you got to start with new ones. And your character you're mm-hmm. taking over already has established relationships that you don't know about and haven't been there for, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of, I think, sometimes harder to be connected to your your new character, especially at first, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But also, like, I don't know. I think that there's something about the... I, I guess it's just... I don't. I'm not entirely sure what I wanted to say about Crusader Kings now that I now that I'm saying it. <laughs> but well, it's like you go ahead, Nick. Guess. Look for any opportunity it's, to bring up Crusader Kings. Here. Yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's kind of like the you know you, you need to have you need to have people that don't matter in order to have people that do matter. That like, is a good point. Kind of yeah. what I'm I thinking of. Like, sure, everyone's named and you can interact with anybody, but like you know, it's cool when suddenly you become a pen pal with some guy in Arabia. And you're from Norway and, you know, <laughs> Crusader Kings. And you're like, wow, how did this happen? Like, I got no idea, but this is cool. You know, like, and, yeah. and you know, there's so many people in that game. But, like, suddenly that person's important. Um, yeah, the, it's kind of like real life, too. Like, mm-hmm. there's a lot of people on this planet, but, like, I don't know most of them. I don't, like, I don't want to, I don't wish anyone poorly but like i also don't like you know know or have personal investments in most people mm-hmm. on this planet uh-huh. so like <laughs> like yeah <laughs> or and, yeah. And, and even and people like the... even people you do know you know yeah like yeah like there's necessarily yeah. care about every single <laughs> right people rise to the top like people they do they're important yeah. they're relevant to you yeah and yeah. so like and that's something I actually really quite like about Darkest Dungeon is that, and a lot of games kind of like this, where it's like, look, it's not a narrative game. So, like, your relationships are all, like, kind of based on your experiences in the game mechanically, which I love. Mm-hmm. And I love that, like, I love that I've grown to rely on Dismas and I, like, want to take care of Dismas because he has been there for a long time. And because he's been there for a long time, we've had a lot of experiences together, mm-hmm. you know. And it's like an organic 
relationship that kind of develops, you know. And I still work with a lot of other people, and I rely on a lot of other people in that game. Mm-hmm. But, like, I, I have a personal connection to, you know, Dismas yeah. uh, and, and Bribos yeah. and a couple of them, too. I like it. I, you kind of develop, like, I don't know. It almost feels like a like a, like a a friendship, you know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It's like, and, and, and you know, you're the boss or you're the team, you're the coach or whatever. And then it's like, yeah, you know, like one or two of them. It's like, I, I really like that guy. In addition to him being a good team player, he was also just someone I got to like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, your 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 heroes have to prove themselves before mm-hmm. you you notice them, kind of, you know. And I love yeah. that that happens mechanically too. Like, there's the yeah. way that you can do it in a narrative game where it's like, you know, you have the story going along, and then like at some point, like I'm thinking like the Last of Us, for example. Like uh-huh. the the character's relationship deepens, but it's like written, you know. Like, yeah. Here's you know, the moment when this happens. Here's the moment when Ellie picks up a gun for the first time, you know, and that's a yeah. big deal. And then, you know, all that kind of stuff. But in this game there isn't any scripted stuff it's like it's all organic like natural like mechanical stuff and like it may not be as curated and as precise as like a written narrative thing but like i super care about these characters that that i've got a personal like experience with you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think it's yeah cool. yeah like it, it i feel like it often hits me harder because like i don't know what it's like for you Aaron, but like you know in middleton Middleton finally, you know, like overcomes her her foils or whatever. It's like, yeah, yeah, because that happened. Like, that's unique. That's an experience that just yeah, you had. And then when she yeah. dies again right afterwards, you know, that's tragic, like yeah. <laughs> deeply tragic because it's like, <laughs> I don't know, it's it's personal. It's unique. Like, I I love that. I find that I often get more invested in systemic characters funny huh interesting that's interesting i had another thought on that too um it's kind mm-hmm. of like when something bad happens to one of these people like say you're playing uh the last of us or whatever or uh-huh. or and you have that opening scene in the first game where yeah. it's like you know the whole like something terrible tragic horrible happens and mm-hmm. it's really gut-wrenching um, and mm-hmm. and a lot of it's really gut wrenching because it's incredibly well written and well acted, and you just have so much empathy for these characters, and and it's just great. But yeah, um, in a game like Darkest Dungeons, when dungeon, when when somebody like dies, someone you're attached to, it's like, in addition to it being, you know, hard. So it's a few different things. Number one, mechanically, it's different now. Like you lost mm-hmm. some advantage, so there's that. But also, it's like. If you had a personal, like, emotional attachment to them, now you're going, could I have done something better? Like, is this my fault? What have I done? Like, and it's, and that actually, that actually, it's, it's like the open-ended nature of it where it's like, I might have been able to do better. And because I didn't do better, now they're dead, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or like, um, in Crusader Kings, when I married off my daughter to that Viking guy and he then eventually tortured and killed her. Like, uh-huh. I was like, I felt responsible for that in a way that, I don't think I would have felt if that happened in another video game that I didn't have that kind of choice, you know, like it wasn't something I could choose. It was just a narrative, you know? Yeah. I, there was this thing that happened where I had this adventure in in Darkest Dungeon. I don't remember who it was. Um, No, yeah, it was, it was Camel. She was my barbarian person. Sorry, that's not, uh, but anyways, (laughs) the reason I keep bringing up their names is just to show that they stuck. I'm sorry that it may not be relevant, but. (laughs) I want to know the story of Camel. (laughs) Yeah. So she, I was always, I was always poking and prodding at things. Like I always, there was something I usually clicked on it. You know, you're like exploring the rooms and if there's something you can interact with, I usually did. But there was this, this, and, and, and something good can happen or something bad can happen or, or nothing can happen. But like, she was the one who was grabbing everything every time. And I went through this dungeon and I was like, oh, that looks dangerous. I probably shouldn't touch it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so, and then Camel takes damage. I'm like, oh, oh man. And then I do it again somewhere else. And then she takes damage again. And then I do something else and she gets sick. And she's just like, she just is a wreck now and she's got all of these problems because i was too curious and i told her to poke everything that she saw and so like when we got back to town i was like i felt bad and i was like well i, I wouldn't normally cure this disease but like this is 100 percent my fault and so i like <laughs> like sent her off to the sanitarium to get her to get her fixed up and stuff and i yeah it was like that yeah i felt really responsible because i just was not really really caring about this character so I oh, mean, yeah. it's, it's so interesting. I think it was Will Wright who once said that, like, there's certain emotions and experiences you can kind of only have in a video game. 
um, mm-hmm. like guilt, for example, like your guilt, you did something and now you feel guilty about it. And like, mm-hmm. I, th- I thought that was really interesting. Um, I mean, like, I think you can have empathy watching a movie or whatever and say, oh, man, that guy did something terrible. Now I feel like bad that he did that but like Uh but like it's different when you do it and it's different and you got to like think about it i mean i played the witcher you Mm -hmm. know and and you get to the crookback bog and i made a decision and then something horrible happened and i was like (laughs) i was like ah i feel sick i feel like i did something wrong and then like i i ended up reflecting on how i make decisions in that game and in my life too i was like oh man like yeah what kind of person am i if that's the kind of thing i just did you know (laughs) uh-huh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh, lovely no you said you, you can you can feel empathy you know watching a movie reading a book but you know video games can teach you empathy or can i don't know kind of guide how you then take it into the rest of your life you know um, rather than just this singular moment it's, it's, it's something that yeah that i don't know kind of becomes part of you in some way that you reflect on later yeah yeah there's this ownership and responsibility yeah like, yeah you can see that the character is feeling guilt but now it's me i'm the one who made the mistake that was me you know i'm the character <laughs> yeah like you can't back up and be like oh come on ned stark <laughs> yeah <laughs> you gotta be like oh crap i i did that <laughs> i messed up <laughs> i deserve this or you know like oh, yeah. okay i gotta deal with the fallout now like this yeah. is something like i yeah. i, I I don't know if the, the two are, are necessarily complete, completely related, but since I played The Witcher 3, I feel like I'm a more empathetic person. <laughs> like, there could have been other factors <laughs> in there. But, uh, I definitely felt I like yeah. playing that game got me reflecting on how I make decisions and, uh-huh. and, and what I value. Because, I don't know, I, and it, we actually we talked about this, and why don't, we made a snippet about this uh, a little while ago, but the... Mm-hmm. But it's like games don't I don't remember who it was was one of you guys said games don't happen in a vacuum, you know, and mm-hmm. and the the beautiful thing about interactive media like games is that like it allows you to experiment with stuff and the games I think that allow you to experiment with morality allow you to learn about morality and the games that allow you to experiment with human relationships allow you to learn about human relationships and like mm-hmm. like I think that it's it's because you're getting experience in a certain thing or you're like and it's and it's art like it's obviously it's not like it's not like actually i'm not actually playing farming simulator i mean well i'm okay i'm not actually learning i'm not actually running a tractor and when i play farming simulator you know yeah but like but you're you're kind of getting the you're just thinking about it like i think it just gets you reflecting and thinking about who you are and what you believe in and what you value because Mm -hmm. you're the one making decisions and uh not every game takes full advantage of that but i think darkest dungeon is one of the ones that that really does you know yeah or at least approaches it like it it does more than a lot Mm -hmm. of games do and and because of that like yeah it means something to me when i play it and it's hard 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 stuff Uh i feel bad a lot no yeah and it's such a simple system too that i mean it's it's a bunch of very very simple systems that are operating doing this and and they have such an effect it makes me think like what more fleshed out systems could do and stuff like I, not that like it's like all right dark is a dungeon but we can do better like i just i just wonder like the uh the psychological side of a lot of psychology as a game mechanic is not explored in a lot of games usually it's written characters are written but when characters yeah. like brains are are systemic like this like you get some really fascinating stuff um and i just i love that i love that darkest dungeon did that even so simply um you also have the potential for like catastrophic failure to the extent that a lot of writers probably won't yeah. go <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, like no it's... yeah yeah <laughs> It's so true. Um, I, I mean, I know we've talked about this in an episode before, but I, I think it's great when games allow you to fail and, and fail hard, you know, and, and not allow you to just reload a save and make up for it. Like, I think there, there's a lot of games not willing to do that because that turns people off, you know, that like, makes people mm-hmm. get you know, frustrated. But yeah, it adds such this depth 
and weight of consequence to it um, mm-hmm. that I, that I think ultimately makes it makes it more rewarding that you wouldn't have like if if you weren't allowed to fail spe- spectacularly it wouldn't feel so great you know if you were spectacularly victorious in something right mm-hmm. yeah. yeah but that balance that makes it so rich and rewarding yeah yeah it's good stuff absolutely well let's chat about a couple other aspects of this game okay um you yeah i mean like just keep keep going and um Aaron, you wanted to talk about um, the art direction a bit. Yeah, just to mention, like I, I think this game has a, a really fascinating art direction. I mean, I, I think like all elements of the game, it's so simple but so effective. Um, mm-hmm. You know, like there's 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 not a lot of polygons. There's not even a lot of animation. You know, a lot of times, mm-hmm. um, you know, some of it plays almost like a you know point and click thing. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I just found it so interesting going into a new area. Like, oh, what's the monster going to look like? Or, you know, what yeah. are the, yeah. you know, things going to appear, you know? And, and just the, the feeling of dungeon crawling, the atmosphere as the torches are going down and, you know, the light, you know, what the, uh, um, you know how, how distinct each hero looks. Um, I just think yeah. It, yeah. it's just another element that works really well with the whole vibe the game's going for. Um, it's so yeah. spooky. It is super yeah, spooky. Yeah, it is. And again, it's not like super like ultra realistic or you know that that immersive, but it it still carries the same tension and terror a lot of the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it's also important to note, like even like a game that is it's so explicitly gamey. You know, it's throwing all these numbers in your face, and yeah, yeah. and you're seeing basically these cardboard cutouts of characters with these simple looping animations, and when they take damage, that you know they strike a simple pose or whatever, or they, you know, like it's it's very. It's it's pretty minimalist in like the the way it presents itself. Like it's it's definitely clever and artistic and and really well thought out. But like it's not like an animation powerhouse or like uh, anything like that. But it's still I, we still got really invested in all of this stuff. We yeah. st- it was still really effective. Yeah. It was like Crusader Kings. Like all I ever see is a static portrait of you know Jarl Carl the second. But like <laughs> I know Jarl Carl the second and he's a person to me. You know like. I think it I think that's really cool. Yeah. yeah. For now. Exactly. Yeah, for yeah. now. That's it's going to Royal change. Court expansion. <laughs> <laughs> and it's honestly something like I didn't really appreciate about these games until I started playing more of them. Like I think I would often judge a, a game based on you know, judge it by its cover, judge it by its, its screenshots where it's like, oh, this doesn't look like it would be that immersive of a game because yeah, it looks gamey because it's turn-based strategy all these numbers and you know it's kind of flat but mm-hmm. yeah no you can you can have a game that that is like that that, that still sucks you in that still um and that still uh yeah makes you feel yeah. all the things without being this you know super immersive cinematic you know yeah, yeah. those are fun too but but yeah it's i, I don't know play playing darkest dungeon made me want to go seek out more games like it, you know, or more game, you know, more turn-based strategy games, more dungeon crawlers, more games that I turned off because it was like, oh, that looks too gamey. I don't know if I would enjoy it or I don't know. If, you know, mm-hmm. like, I've, I've talked about I like to be immersed in something. I like to, you know, feel, you know, like whatever the character is doing right. and just be engaged in it. Um, and, and this game kind of showed me that if, you know, if the, if the style and the gameplay, the mechanics, the direction of it is strong enough you can absolutely still feel all those things you know no matter what the yeah yeah you yeah. feel like so yeah and darkest dungeon i mean to be frank is a beautiful game like i think yeah. it looks fantastic oh, oh yeah yeah it's, it's yeah, such that. a such a such a cool vibe and like you said zach it's so spooky and like yeah. uh, the, the art's just really fantastic I, I've, I've been i've been looking at the art for darkest dungeon for years ever since it came out like i would just like scroll through the enemy catalog because i just like looking at what they all looked like yeah, and now good. to finally play it it's like oh okay this really uh, it is a really cool experience yeah it's it's awesome i like it a lot it's pretty yeah it's it's very good yeah very good i think you wanted oh yeah sorry, go, ahead, go ahead i was no, gonna I, think... I was gonna shift gears yeah shift gears that's all right i think i'm good all right 
Well, you wanted to talk about the the different dungeons and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I just like I liked that there were different options. You know, mm-hmm. it's mm-hmm. not an open world game. You know, but uh-huh. like, but you do have some freedom yeah. to like. Well, I'm gonna go to the cove this time, and I'm gonna go to the ruins. And in my yeah. in my situation, it ended up being where, um, I was like, okay, well, I got a lot of people who are good in the cove or bad in the ruins, and then I was like. And so I'd I'd be like, okay, well the heroes that are good in the ruins are they're they're on the mend right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna go somewhere else. And I appreciated that. I just had different ones. Did you guys go to all of them? Mm-hmm. Uh what is it? Ruins, Warrens, Wheel, Cove. Cove. Yeah. I got I went to all those. I went to all those at least once. Yeah. Some of them yeah. less than others. I think I spent most of my time in the ruins and the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I found those a little less hard. <laughs> yeah, well yeah, and that's the thing, like you gotta it it just depends. You gotta know what you're what you're going to be up against and mm-hmm. uh, and stuff, yeah. No, but I, I like how the game incentivizes variety, you know, because like, if you spend too much time in the ruins, then your heroes are going to be stressed out when they go to the ruins, you know? Um, and so it yeah. incentivizes you to, to explore different, I mean, you know, other than just the variety of it itself. Uh, but I think mm-hmm. similar to, you know, when we talked about Hades, yeah. and it's like, oh, the game, you know, gives you incentives and advantages for trying out different weapons and doing things. Uh, I think this does it well with having characters who are strong or weak in, in different areas. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all organic, too. It, like, it makes sense. It's like, oh, yeah, no, I I understand. That that makes sense to me. If he doesn't like the ruins, then, like, yeah. maybe, yeah. maybe he, uh, he, when he's the he one saw, on deck, I'm not going to the ruins. Yeah, and I like, it's like he saw all his friends die in the ruin. You know, he's really, he, you know, he has PTSD. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, the, uh, I loved how much weight the preparation phase carried, like the, you know, you, you, you got to pick your heroes, you got to pick where you're going, and you got to provision. And I just remember being like, if I screw this up, like, this is where the this is where my choices really matter. Like, in combat, it's pretty moment to moment. Mm-hmm. But, like, here's where I have to think and make sure I don't screw this up. Um, and uh, I yeah. really enjoyed that phase. Um, it's true, yeah, the, the rest of the game is kind of a dice roll, but that's the point where you have complete control of what you're... And that's yeah. And also, it's like uh, when I first started playing the game, I didn't understand the significance of that preparation phase, you know. Mm-hmm. And I didn't understand the uh, the uh, the importance of like I didn't understand what that trinkets were. Definitely. Oh yeah. <laughs> and like, and like I. So what happened was I um. I, I didn't understand marching order, <laughs> so uh-huh. so I would just like, okay, you look good, blah, 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 throw them all in, and then you mm-hmm. know I'd have like a healer in the front or something, and uh-huh. and it was terrible. And um, but but once I you know figured it out, I was like, oh okay, now I start spending like way more time on the preparation phase than I used to. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna be very particular about who goes in which position, and I'm looking at all their quirks to figure out if they're a good match for where I'm going this time. Yeah, and um, and then I'm looking at a. And then and then I'm like, okay, this is the team I'm taking out to the cove this week. And then I'm like, okay, who's left behind that I maybe should, you know, take care of? And I go back to the hamlet. Uh huh. And then I'll be like, okay, you're going to the sanitarium, you're going to the brothel, you're going to the abbey, you know. And yeah. Take care of that stuff. I just, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoyed doing that. Well, like, I, I would often flip back and forth between the hamlet and the prep phase. I'd be like, all right, who, yep. who do I have? And I'd go into the, 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 provi- the preparation stage and get everyone ready and then be like, oh. I wonder if these abilities might work better. So I'd go back to the Hamlet and I'd, I'd go to the guild and I'd reorder some of their abilities and stuff like that so I could try to build this 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 really effective party. And I just, I loved, I really loved the combat system mm-hmm. in this game, actually. I wasn't expecting to as much as I did, but like... Yeah, yeah. When when you're when you're dealing with like marching order and and you've got these characters that like have different bonuses depending on where they're standing and they can move around like the jester, I love he's got that move where he like he he goes forward, and then and then he if he's at the very front of the party he's in super danger but then he does this ability that just like totally destroys whoever he hits. Um, mm-hmm. and I just thought that was so fun to like trying to balance that and just the risk yeah. of the roar of placement and stuff like that. Man. Um, and how, really devast- that. how devastating it was when you got an attack that changed your order. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And all of a sudden, someone's useless because they're only or, in the... Or you get surprised. Yeah. You get surprised by monsters and you start off the fight and everyone's jumbled up. And you're like, ah, no, I can't do anything. <laughs> uh, no. 
I had but an if ambush. Strong melee guys in the back. I, <laughs> I know, yeah. And then it's then you got to spend the first couple of rounds like getting everybody back into position, which is valuable time that everyone's oh, starting yeah. to take mm-hmm. damage and stress. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. later on, as the monsters keep getting reinforcements, if you take too long to kill them, and it's just... <laughs> you know, I've never actually gotten to that point. Oh, oh really? Yeah. 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 I've never I made it that far into happens. a combat encounter. Yeah. No. That sounds I, terrifying. Though. I had a couple. Of, yeah, a cu- couple of fights. Um. Because, yeah, I, I think my order was messed up, and so I had to keep rearranging guys and doing things and healing. Um, it said they they would have like a little blurb. It's like, oh, this is taking too long. Reinforcements are gonna come. Oh, oh yeah, that, that's oh. just funny flavor text, you know? That's fun. Um, uh-huh. And then I got to the last guy, and then all of a sudden, three more guys show up. I'm like, oh, oh. no, <laughs> that's terrible. Because that's every cool. encounter has the ability to destroy you. Like, yeah, yeah. I very dark soulsy in that way like there's just nowhere is safe you know at any moment mm-hmm. everything mm-hmm. could spiral out of control i love that get, yeah yeah get hit with a critical at, at a bad moment or you know get hit by some status effect that you don't have something to cure it or yeah. uh-huh or you yeah. go to the the warrens or the or whatever be and you're like okay the warrens has a bunch of like beast type so i'm going to uh-huh. take the people who are good against beast type and then you're like oh crap i forgot that there's sometimes humans in there and those are completely uh-huh. different and you know yeah 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 oh man i think the first time i went to the warrens i didn't know what would what the warrens was and i showed uh-huh. up and i didn't have any like blight or bleed protection yeah. and i just like I, I mean, it, kind of like what we talked about for, before, you know, it's it's really trial and error. You show up and then you realize how unprepared you are. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I just, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. No, it is, kind it, of. it is fun. It, and then, yeah, it is it is kind of reminiscent of like exploring in Dark Souls with like, what kind of terrifying monstrosity are you going to find around this corner and are you going to be prepared for it? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's it's just wild. Love it. Yeah. Um, you wanted to talk about the objectives that it gives you, Zach. Yeah. So you guys have seen the list of objectives in that game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest. I ignored it most of the time. <laughs> uh, first of all, it's so long. <laughs> uh-huh. yeah. like, I, I don't even know how many there are, but I was like, I did. I had no idea. I like didn't know about it at first. And I was like, what's this button? And I clicked on it. It's like, oh my gosh, there's like 50 bad guys I got to kill. You know, uh-huh. I got like I mean, how many assaults on the darkest dungeon itself? I haven't even finished like the the primal, preliminary areas. Yeah, you know? I mean after eight hours, I, I think I had two objectives checked off. I know, so. same. I think I like killed the boss and opened the game. You know, like right. Welcome to the Hamlet. That's the first objective, right? <laughs> welcome to the Hamlet. Um, yeah, I don't know. I uh, yeah, I was curious about. I guess it's interesting in that you didn't even pay attention to it nick was there just was it just not interesting or relevant to you what was well, it <laughs> i guess i i still don't i guess I, I didn't approach this game necessarily with the long-term mindset i do not know if i'm going to finish this game and so i recognize that my approach might be a little different to to another that like i don't i don't know how much farther i'm gonna get i don't know i know it's a pretty pretty substantially it's a it's a pretty chunky game. It's pretty big, pretty long yeah. to like get through, and so I was. I in my brain I was like, well, so long as I'm adventuring, I'm making progress, right? I mean, like, there's this little bar that goes up and ticks up, mm. and it means another boss is being approached. So like, I was, I kind of just, I kind of was just kind of going at it and 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 doing what missions I felt I could. And I kind of in my the back of my brain was like, yeah, the objectives will get checked off as I go. You know, it's not mm-hmm. something I have to focus on. So it was something I was aware of. Yeah. But it was something I kind of figured would handle itself as I played the game. I don't know if that's true. Maybe you really do have to focus. But uh, yeah, that was the experience that I had. I think that it is kind of nice that like most of what you do ultimately feeds into, um, into the objectives. You know, like mm-hmm. you're right. The objective, the progress bar does go up. You know. Yeah, as long as you're doing something, you're probably getting pretty close to the yeah. next thing you need to do. I mean, a lot of those objectives mm-hmm. are just beating certain bosses, and so you know, as yeah. you get to yeah. each level, you'll find these bosses. Um, I found like even with just the um, the sub object, just like the the quests, you know, per each area was like, oh, clear 
you know, 90% of the battle room for Beaches boss or, you know, explore yeah. 100% of the room. Yeah. It, t- it took like three times before I even realized that that was a thing. Like, I, I don't know, maybe <laughs> I was just dumb or not paying attention, but it was like, it's telling me I can choose quests. Like, how do I do that? I'm not seeing what I'm interacting with. It's just <laughs> give me an area to go to. Like, I don't know. <laughs> And then, yeah. you know, finally I noticed the little green icons and I was like, oh, okay. That's yeah. really funny. Yeah. It's fine. I noticed my approach very drastically depending on what the quest was. Because it was like, well, if I don't have to go that way, I won't. Like, I, yeah. I tend to not stay any longer in, out and about than I ever needed to. No, me neither. I was, <laughs> like, if there was an empty room that I could explore and everyone was at full health and we'd already beaten everything and I knew there wasn't anything in it, I'd go explore it after yeah. I beat the quest. But otherwise, it was like, quest done, get back to the hamlet as soon as freaking possible. Right. We need yeah. to get out of here because this place is terrifying. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it just depended. There, there were a couple of times it's like, oh, my crew's doing well enough. I'm almost done exploring the dungeon. I'll just, you know, keep doing this. But grab whatever else is I've here. I still, yeah. I've still got inventory space left, you know. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think it's funny when you like finish a quest and then there's like a chest in the room you finished it in, and it's like, do you want to keep exploring? And I'm like, yeah, long enough to open that box, <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'll bet I missed a ton just by pushing the return to Hamlet button right then. Yeah. Because <laughs> I would often forget what whatever was in the background. Like, I'd do a room battle, and then I'd just like, okay, I finished. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. I definitely missed stuff. But, um, yeah. But, I mean, all, all those things, like, for the most, you know, the resources, they're either money or things to get you money or, mm-hmm. you know, experiences. Or money, money, money. I don't think there's like too many unique. Yeah, I think it's okay. Yeah. You'll you'll be all right. Stuff you can find later. Yeah. Anyway, I just thought something I liked about the objectives is that like, it's pretty non sequential. Um, mm-hmm. It's like, you know, if you just want to focus on being in the ruins, you can do that. <laughs> yeah. You know? But also, yeah. if you need to spread it out, you can do that too. You know. Yeah. It, uh, it just felt like it wanted to it let me go at my pace which mm-hmm. i thought was really interesting like in, in that way it felt really relaxed at the same time as feeling terribly tense i um, I, I appreciated that contrast actually I, I think it helped i loved that actually i thought that was so brilliant because there's so many games it's kind of like we were talking about i think it was last week but it's like a lot mm-hmm. of games in order to have some kind of drama or tension they provide you with this urgency often a false urgency but in you know uh-huh. games like uh a lot of like roguelikes and stuff like there actually is real mm-hmm. urgency yeah or XCOM. But, yeah or xcom yeah and like this one is like um i mean when you're in combat everything is tense but mm-hmm. like when you're when you're out of it like when you're choosing what missions to take like the overall pace of the game is as fast as you want to go and um i still felt tension and drama and like a desire to complete it but like it wasn't like hey hurry up you know so that's, yeah. I find that really interesting, actually. I thought it was really yeah. interesting how he, sometimes the heroes, I would notice, going from room to room, sometimes they would say, wait a minute, or hold up. And there, like, wasn't really a mechanical, to me, it didn't seem like there was a mechanical effect for waiting, but it, like, mm-hmm. just kind of added to, like, the sense of unease and, um, you know, exploring the unknown that, that I thought was, was uh, interesting. Yeah every once in a while that would happen and i would be like oh and then i'd just like stop a moment i would i would use it as an opportunity to take stock and i was like wait yeah, is yeah. there anything i have to consider oh i should probably rearrange my marching order or whatever you know because it got yeah. all bungled up in the last fight um i love the little character blurbs um but yeah like sometimes like they actually made me think mechanically as well as 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 conveying personality yeah there was a lot of personality in this game i i really quite like it Mm-hmm. yeah and, it, and it's like we said like other you know there's other games that, that have great personality that's written into the game that's you know in the narrative or in you know, how it's yeah. built but this is completely random and unique with each playthrough and with each person and, and it's kind of based off your decisions and kind of based on luck or kind of based on you know so it's yeah it's, it's, it's this wholly unique experience so that when things click together it's kind of more satisfying because it's like oh that like didn't have to click but like it did and that's fun you know yeah it's i i was delighted and surprised by this game often i I was surprised at how much i came to love it 
Like mm-hmm. I, I actually yeah. like in my brain, I what before I played it, I was like, oh, Darkest Dungeon. I know people like that game. I've, I've heard it's kind of dark and morally gray, and I don't know if that's really my thing. I say after having played The Witcher. Anyways, um, <laughs> uh, it's it was, and I was it was I was kind of trepidatious. I don't know what that word means, but that's what the word that came to my mind. But the point is like. I wasn't sure about it, but after having played it, I love it. Like, I love this game, and I think there's a lot to take away from this game. Uh, and I'm really, really glad that we've been playing it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. First first few hours were a bit of a chore for me. I was like, oh, okay, uh-huh. I can't play Darkest Dungeon because they're going to talk about it, and I need to know what yeah. I'm doing. So I'll play it. I'm like, okay, still not getting this game, but, you know, you get to it. But, but yeah, I, I think it's, it's the, little, the little touches of personality, the... The, how the game kind of reveals itself to you as, as you go on that really uh yeah you know, made me right like yeah I, I think i'll definitely keep playing it you know me too game. yeah yeah in fact talking well, about it it's like oh i want to play it today I know, I, I yeah back, yeah. <laughs> yeah me too yeah. it gets me excited about it yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's yeah i you know I, i've been thinking about um something i love about this podcast that we do is um if nothing else, it gets me playing games that uh, I wouldn't have played otherwise, and mm-hmm. um, and then I end up having a lot of really wonderful new favorite games. You know, mm-hmm. um, I mean, we all adore the Outer Wilds, you know, and mm-hmm. and a big part of that, I I wasn't gonna play it, you know, unless unless we were doing it for the podcast, and then we did it for the podcast, and I was like, gosh, I love that game. It's so mm-hmm. good. I haven't even finished it, and I still adore it. Mm-hmm. Um, or like. Uh, you know, I, I finally got you guys playing Crusader King, so that was good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, but like, I, I'm finding that the the common themes I think with a lot of these games uh, that I really really like are that um, it lets you kind of take it at your own pace, and it lets you kind of uh-huh. explore and 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 do things in your own way. And there's a certain amount of I don't know. Uh, uh it's you're an important part of it more than more than it's not playing itself you know you're you're Mm -hmm. you're an active participant and the choices you make have some real impact and there's some permanent consequences and there's some Mm -hmm. you know sense of meaning in them And, and i feel like this one because it's so hard and punishing and full of consequences and full of a challenge that must be mastered um, and mm-hmm. full of characters that you grow to care about, like it is meaningful to me, and I'm, and I'm really enjoying it a lot. So, I, I will yeah. be keeping, I will be continuing to play it. Yeah. Well, yeah, fantastic. I uh, was there anything else specifically you guys wanted to talk about, like specific aspects uh, about Darkest Dungeon? I mean, like I feel like we've summed up. I was gonna, I was gonna say, well, let's talk a little bit about what we've learned from this game, but I think, I think we've we've kind of been chatting especially this last yeah. bit just about what yeah, we're think, walking away from it with i, I think we've, we've pretty well summed that up but i think uh, so yeah if there was anything else you guys wanted to chat about um if not we'll wrap up i think play it i'm good um, give it a chance yeah yeah play well, thank game. you guys yeah oh yeah play the game play the game it is worth your time it was worth my time anyway I don't know. mine too <laughs> Yeah. Well, uh, we're going to be off for a little while for the holidays, but we will be back. Um, our next highlight game uh, is going to be Near Automata, the 2017 action RPG by Platinum Games. Uh, we'll be playing that. We'll be playing that uh, in preparation for our next game highlight. So go ahead and play along with us, and we'll chat about it for that next episode. Um, as always, Zach and Aaron, thank you for this lovely discussion. Thanks, thank you. And, yeah. And. Uh, And thank you, dear listeners, for listening. And we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.